Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to just show you something that the Lord just showed me. Now, I got out my Bible, and I... Okay, here's how it started. I was talking to the Lord, and I remembered what I, I said to you yesterday in a video about how... Okay, let me back it up, what I didn't say. Back in 2013, okay, Holy Spirit, help me to make sense of this and just, I'm excited because I've been shown something. Okay, help me to show them what you've shown me in a manner that makes sense. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, I was thinking about back in 2013 how so many people, got a word or a dream or a message of some kind and people kept seeing signs and this and that there were several that something huge was going to happen when i saw and hit perihelium something about thanksgiving day specifically and that there was going to be the three days of darkness or uh we needed to stock up water and food and i told my family and and it, it was just, everybody was expecting it. Okay, well, I had been getting messages that year since, like, March, I think, was my first one. And when, when all those people's, what they said, didn't come to pass, and then there were a lot of them for Christmas, and those didn't come to pass. Around the first of the year, I fasted and prayed and wanted to know, well, Lord, was I even hearing from you those messages I got last year? How do I know that I wasn't deceived? Did I get those messages from you? And I know I've heard, I heard that pastor that wrote the Pigs in the Parlor say, we shouldn't do this because it's like using a Ouija board. But I know a lot of people do it. And when I did that, I got this message. I opened up straight to Haggai chapter 2. And if you'll see the way my Bible is laid out, there are no other passages. You see? There are only those passages. So I started reading from the front top. Do consider from this day onward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, from the day, <clears throat> excuse me, from the day when the temple of the Lord was founded, consider, is the seed still in the barn? even including the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree, it has not borne fruit. Yet, from this day on, I will bless you. So, I took that as all the ones I've tried to reach, I didn't, because I didn't have a lot of subscribers. I had a couple hundred few hundred maybe 300 and some but he said from this day on I will bless you well my computer got hacked the first one got hacked way early in 2013 after I put out just a few messages <clears throat> and my daughter gave me her old one and all all I could do, the um, the thing you put the SD card in, it wouldn't read it because they'd spilled something on it. So there was some stickiness and some letters, and that thing wouldn't work. So all I could do is make slideshows. Now, I'm, I'm making a point here. I'm getting to something. I could still use it to make slideshows. And if you go back to way in the beginning, you, you can see some of them. I had to put my messages up using uh, pictures. And typing out the words. Okay, moving on. Then the word of the Lord came 
And then they hacked into that one in early 2014. They hacked into that one and I didn't have a computer anymore. Every time I'd get online, it would crash. It would do something. I'd have to, I don't remember. But after about the third time, I couldn't get back on at all or something. I don't really remember, but it got where it wouldn't get back on at all. Okay, moving on. Then the word of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the 24th day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I am going to shake the heavens and the earth. And that was in one of my messages. <coughs> Excuse me. I will overthrow the thrones of kingdoms and destroy the power of the kingdoms of the nations. And I will overthrow the chariots and their riders and the horses and their riders will go down. Everyone by the sword of another. On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, my servant, declares the Lord, and I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. And when I read that, I felt the Holy Spirit all over me, and I knew he was telling me, I have chosen you. He's chosen many of you. There's a verse that says, many are called, but few are chosen. Okay, and even out of those few, not all obey their calling. Okay, so I look over here on, that's verse 23. All right, Haggai 2, verse 23. I looked over here. Oh, I read down here in the concordance, or what do you call that? The comments, commentaries at the bottom, which I don't usually pay much attention to because it's just some man's summation of a verse. But for some reason, I went down here and it took me, uh, I'm trying to find which one. Took me to Ephesians 1, 4. All right, I'm not finding it, but it's in here somewhere. So to save time, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. And it says, Just as he chose us in him before... Oh, I know, I got online and went to Blue Letter Bible. Okay, well, anyway, see, I don't use the paper version much because it's so heavy and it's hard for me to hold up and anyway but I wanted to use the book this morning so I was reading and it says just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we would be holy and blameless before him in love he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will. And I said, Lord, this is where they get that doctrine of predestination. Saying that those of us who've accepted you, we, we couldn't help it because you predetermined that we were going to believe in you. And they are some of those people they believe in once saved always saved because of, this is one of the verses he predestined them to be sons of God so it doesn't matter what they do they're going to heaven because they're predestined and I said Lord I really need your Holy Spirit to help me with this because this just doesn't sound right <clears throat> he's trying to, I didn't bring any water. Well, I'm sorry, he's trying to take my voice. <clears throat> I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. <clears throat> I haven't been hoarse all morning. Been talking to God. No hoarseness. Anyway, 
I said, you got to help me with this. And you know what thought came into my head. Go to your blueletterbible.org and look it up. Look it up in Strong's or something like that. It was just a thought came into my head. And I said, of course, this word predestined has got to be um, translated wrong. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. I love that Bible. Okay, now, I got on Blue Letter Bible, and I'm going to pull it forward, and it says, Ephesians 1, 5 says, having, this is KJV now, this book is NASB, so now I'm in the KJV, this one says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will and I read on and on and it didn't help so I went to tools and I pulled up having predestinated came from one word so I clicked on it it's Strong's uh, G4309. Okay, so when you click on that, this is such a cool tool. All right. You go down, and KJV translates Strong's G4309 in the following manner Predestinate is used four times. Determine before one time and ordain one time. Okay, buddy, don't. No, no, no. To pre. Okay, now outline of biblical usage. Buddy, please stop. Please come here. Come here. Come lay by mama. Good boy. Good boy. Come lay by mama. That's a good boy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good boy. All right. The the first one is to predetermine, decide beforehand. Two, in the New Testament of God it is decreeing from eternity. Three, to foreordain, comma, a point beforehand. Okay, let's keep going. Then Strong's definitions. They give the word written in Greek, pruriso. Anyway, um, it comes from a combination of 4253 and 3724. And do you see how? With humans, even with the direction of the Holy Spirit, if they're not, okay, things were changed for a reason. Let me continue. It, they're saying Strong's definitions are to limit in advance, for example, to predetermine. Determine before, comma, ordain, comma, or predestinate. Now, let's take the word ordain and go back to the verse. All right. I'm going to start 1-4 because that's what led me here. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Okay, now that is implying it also. But I, I looked up the predestined one because... Okay, let me continue. Let's fill in the word predestined with the word ordained. Having ordained us 
unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Okay, now I'm going to back up to 1-4. I hope I'm not being confusing. I'm trying to show you that there are several options that our words have different meanings, right? These Greek words have different meanings. And the men who translated the original Greek, or they might have used Latin, the Latin Vulgate, um, I think most of them used the original Greek. It tells you in each Bible translation what, what they used. Okay. They had the option of looking at the what that word meant and deciding, okay, which one of these words, which one of these words in the definition should we use for this scripture? And they chose predestined when this one should have probably said ordained, having ordained us unto adoption. He ordains us when we become saved. Okay, now, back up to 1-4. Let's back up to 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. All right, let's go to the toolbar on that one. And I'm going to look up, he hath chosen. It's a phrase. One word represents that whole phrase. He hath chosen. Eglikomai, something like that. And it means to choose, choose out, or make choice. Now, let's keep going because sometimes the meaning is down below farther. To pick out, to choose, or choose, to pick or choose out for oneself. A, choosing one out of many, for example, Jesus choosing his disciples. B, choosing one for an office. C, of God choosing whom he judged fit to receive his favors and separated from the rest of mankind to be particularly his own and to be attended continually by his gracious oversight. Gee, that's a lot of words for one phrase. Anyway, for example, the Israelites. Yes, he chose the Israelites. D, of God the Father, choosing Christians as those whom he set apart from the irreligious multitude as dear unto himself and whom he has rendered through faith in Christ citizens in the messianic kingdom so that the ground of choice lies in Christ and his merits only. Now I'm going to go further. I still say we're not predestined. Otherwise, God would be a respecter of persons. You see, the Word of God tells us elsewhere that God is no respecter of persons. In other words, He doesn't favor one over another. To say He chose us before we were ever born, before time began, is to say He favored us over the others. It, it just can't mean that. Our, our translations are not perfect. That's the point of this. 
Okay, the words given under Strong's definition are to select, make choice, choose, as to choose out of others, out of other groups to choose out or chosen. Now, under Strong's New Testament 1586, see, if you kind of got to go further to completely understand it. It's a perfect passive, partic passive participle. Skip all that. I knew all that in English at one time. I don't know it now. Once in Luke 9, 35, left marginal reading. Oh, my goodness. This gets really into it. To pick out, to choose in the New Testament where the reading is doubtful, always middle, to pick or choose out for oneself from among many, from a number of persons, used of choosing one for an office to discharge some business. Okay, but do you see how, what a huge job it would was for the first whoever did it first had to sit down and take the Aramaic however it was written and put it into Greek do you think all the apostles wrote it in Greek I'm wondering let's just say they did okay so you're sitting there with Greek and you're going to put it into the first was Latin so who was responsible for putting it into the Latin the Roman Catholic Church took the original Greek with all these many meanings and someone had to put the meanings in English those could be wrong do you see where I'm getting when I saw that word ordain could be filled in instead of predestined, I'm, I was like, well, of course, that makes so much sense. The devil, <sighs> we've had our Bibles messed with from way longer ago than this century or last century whenever that Mandela effect went into effect I mean there's really no denying it is there if you know the King James Version and you read it now if you can't see it then you don't know the King James Version very well that's what I'm saying I studied it first from the time I was 17 or no almost 19 is when I got married to my first husband and my mother gave us a King James Version Bible for a wedding present and I used that Bible until I got sick in 1990 I got married in 1979 Okay, so that was 11 years. Then I had trouble with it. I had trouble reading anything, the written word. So I bought an NIV. I didn't know it had what people say it has now and left out a bunch of scriptures. I still learned. I could tell it was different. I didn't like the Psalm 23. I loved the old version and certain I'd memorized a lot of verses out of the King James Version. Okay, I'm getting off track now. And my main point is you read your Bible. If something doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. Just say, Lord, I'm not going to worry about it. Just you reveal it to me if you want to help me to understand but I'm not gonna just be all confused and quit reading because of it 
because I think that might be what happens with a lot of folks that claim it's contradictory and can't be right because of things like that. It's not been translated exactly right. Even this King James Version is using predestinated instead of ordained. And that makes so much more sense. God would not have chosen us before time began. Now why he chose the Israelites as his chosen people, I don't know. Maybe they were foreordained. But this point is all about Bible translations and how some of the words are not exactly right. Okay, and I could pull out other examples as well. So when you study your Bible, if you come upon something that seems contradictory or you don't understand it, pray for understanding. Use the Strong's Concordance. Check out the other possible meanings. And that, you'll get revelations. You'll get a better understanding of what that word probably meant, was supposed to mean. And see if it doesn't make more sense to you. I've talked way longer than I intended. I may have to do this over. I will listen and see. Okay, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, and over each and every one of you as well. Alright, bye for now. I will talk to you later. Shabbat Shalom.